Moreover, the Lord answered that the offence might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Thank God for that amazing grace, that amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. Praise God. That as sin has reigned unto death, you see, you've got to realise your sin reigns unto death. That means you're going to die in your sin because that's what the result of sin is. Death. The result of sin is death. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so, my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. You see the difference? The, the eternal life, what Jesus Christ gives you, instead of death from your sin. You see, because Jesus forgives you, he can forgive you of your sins if you would only give him a try in your life. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he hath loved us, even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and have raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where we're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. You see, in ages to come, that don't mean in this life, that means in eternity. The Bible says that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard the things that God has prepared for those that love him. If, if you love him, Jesus said, you will keep his commandments. But these days, people don't want to keep the commandments. They enjoy the pleasures of sin. In the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. So by grace you are saved through faith. You see, this is what Christianity's starting point is. You've got to have faith in Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of people put their faith in other things and it don't accomplish nothing. But when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, that's when things start happening. Wonderful things start happening when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. And, and not of yourself, it is a gift of God. For by grace you are saved through faith. And not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. A lot of people are calling themselves a good person. I think I'm a good person. God likes me because I'm a good person. When the Bible says there is no good. No, not one. You might say that you're a good person in your own intellect. By your own morals. But when you compare it to the morals of Almighty God, you will realize that you're not a good person. You will realize that you are a sinner. You are a wretched sinner who needs to be saved. Praise God. That's what happens when grace comes to you. You see yourself as you are. You see yourself as who you are. And you know that you need to be saved. Praise God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. You see, when you get saved, you don't walk the way you walk. You don't talk the way you used to talk. The places that you used to go, you go there no more. I mean, I used to think heaven on earth was Saturday night at the disco, but I was foolish for that. My heaven on earth right now is worshipping Jesus Christ. Whether it be at a church, or whether it be at a home, whether it be with friends, or whether it be alone, that's heaven on earth, earth for me. The, the psalmist says, oh, what a taste of glory divine. Jesus is heaven on earth to me. In fact, he's more than life to me. He's the one who's given me life. The life which he said he would give.
to whosoever will come to him. He said, I've come that they might have life. Who is he talking about? He's talking about you who are dead in your trespasses and sin. He said, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. More abundant life is having more of God in you. Not about what you own. Not about what you possess. Not about the size car you drive or the how many rooms you got in your house. That's not the abundant life. The abundant life is knowing Jesus Christ as your, pers your personal Savior. When you know Him, when you have that connection with God, when you come into the reality and know that He's had mercy and His grace has reached you and His grace has saved you, then you start reaping the abundant life. You reap abundant life and God is still offering that abundant life to anyone. That's why the Bible says, do so every will. That means anyone, whoever you may be, you can have life. He said, he's the one has the Son has life. And he's the one has not the Son. Jesus Christ has not life. You see, without Jesus Christ in your life, your life is just like a, a vapor. You ever seen the kettle boil? The vapor appears for a moment, and then it disappears into the elements. That's what your life is going to be. But not for the Christian. Because whosoever believes in Jesus Christ, Though he was dead, yet shall he live. You see, Jesus is going to call us from the grave. And we're going to put on immortality. And we're going to be with him forever and ever. So we haven't got nothing to worry about. Whatever we're going through in this world, we don't have to worry about it. Because to be absent from the flesh, is to be present with the Lord. You know, and I want to be present with Him. Someone says, oh, I want to see Him. Just to look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, whole at last, ever to rejoice. You see, the cares of life, a lot of men are getting separated from God because of the cares of life. But Jesus said, Forsake ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. You see, a lot of people spend too much time worrying. I mean, I'm a worrier myself. I worry about my bills. But when God comes, when God comes, he's always on time. He never failed me yet. I may have felt him in my life, but God is always on time. He never fails. He's faithful. He's faithful. You can depend on Jesus. He's the best friend you'll ever have. Closer than a brother, my Jesus is to me. He's my dearest friend in everything I need. He's my rock, my shield and hiding place. Closer. Than the brother, my Jesus is to me. Some people are closer to their brothers. Some people are closer to their mothers. Some people are closer to their fathers. Some people are closer to their sisters. But Jesus said, if you love them more than you love me, you're not worthy of me. And you've got to put Jesus first at the top of your list. A lot of people have put their girlfriends and their boyfriends top of the list. But you got to love God. you got to love Jesus more than you love everyone. I mean, I love people now because of the spirit that God has given to me. I love people even if I don't know you. God has given me that spirit of love. But I don't love you more than Jesus. Because there's no friend like Jesus. Jesus never fails. Mother and father will forsake you. Sister and brother will leave you. But God will never leave you. Jesus will never leave you. And you can stand on his word, on his promises. 
and is assured that he will be with you even until the end of the world. Can you imagine that? Well, that's how it's going to be. He won't leave his people. He won't forsake us. He's with us now and even until the end of the world. What a God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. He's a mighty God. What glimpse of him in glory. He's going to be worth every trial, every tribulation that we pass through. The Bible says that a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. You know, when you're having a good time, a time just flows past. Well, the Bible says, well, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. Just like one day. You know, when you're in heaven, you're going to hope that it will never end. Go glory to God. And you'll know that the next day is going to come. And it's going to be like a thousand years. And a thousand years is going to be like a day. Oh, hallelujah. That's what we're looking forward to. To be with the Lord. The one who saved us. When we look upon the face of Jesus. The one who saved us by his grace. What a day. Glorious day. Hallelujah. Feel the Holy Ghost by now. What a day that will be. When by Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the heart. And leads me through. God is going to lead me through. The promised land. What a day. Glorious day. That will be. Oh, that's a wonderful song.